Hi, this video will demonstrate how to use the filtering feature in your QuickSense app. I'm going to go ahead and open up my QuickSense app. You can see the three sheets created, product analysis, state analysis, and raw data. I'll go ahead and click product analysis. It shows my three visualizations on my product analysis sheet. Obviously, we have a lot of quantity sold and sales transactions. I'm gonna filter, I'm gonna learn a little bit more about my data. That's what this tool is all about. Let's go ahead, two different ways of filtering. So I can filter by any of the data, by any of the filters we created, product name, flavor name, sales year, sales quarter, sales month, and sales method, okay? And obviously we can create more filters for the application. We'll just start with those for now. So let's say I wanna select a particular flavor. I do one or two things, I can click the Flavor name drop down box, or I can even select on the pie bar or bar chart the specific flavor I want to look at. So we want to look at here, I'll look at cookie dough and I'll look at Rocky Road. I'll click the green check mark, mark here, the green icon if you would, and notice what happened. It filters out all the data on my sheet based upon those two flavors. This is your two flavor, two of nine, so I selected two flavors. If I click here, it shows me in green the two flavors I selected. Okay, I can select another flavor, let's say cookies and cream. Again, I click the green icon. That shows me those three flavors. It shows me in the pie chart. It shows me in the buy chart. And even in the, the line chart here, it shows me just the data for those three flavors. Let's say I want to, you know, I want to clear out my selection. I can click the X here, or I can click the Clear out all selection button here. Let's do that. <clears throat> Obviously, I can have multiple selections. So I can say, let's say we'll select product name, ice cream gallon. Let's look at vanilla. So I can click vanilla here. I can click the flavor name here. Vanilla here. So I'm saying ice cream gallon vanilla. Okay. Now let's look at the sales here. Let's say in 2019, we had a special on ice cream gallons, vanilla ice cream gallons. Click here. Now, so I have ice cream gallons. It's my product. The flavor is vanilla. The sales here is 2019. Now notice here, when I say, let's say I want to look at a particular quarter. I can click the drop down here. Notice what's happened. I can only select these four quarters. Obviously, 2016 second quarter is not in 2019. Hence, that's why I cannot select it. That's why it's grayed out, okay? I can also look at a sales month and the sales month for 2019. We want to look at June and July. And then maybe I want to look at a particular sales month. And notice again, my data is changing, okay? It says here, quantity sold 11,028. In a sales transaction, I had 87 transactions for vanilla ice cream gallons in the sales year of 2019, and specifically the two months I selected. Maybe we had a special on a website, so I can even look at website. Because it gives you all the data, again, for vanilla ice cream gallons in 2019 for the months of June and July, sales transactions via the website. That's kind of some multiple selections. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and click the clear all selections box. I'm gonna switch over to the product um, state analysis sheet. Again, we have two, two visualizations here. We have our map and we have our top 10 cities, okay? So map, I, could, I can select on the map and zoom in Zoom out and zoom in, of course, on the map and notice the bubbles. The larger the bubble means the more sales we had in that particular city. Okay, these are distribution points, right? So again, I can, there's a few different ways I can select particular cities, okay? I'm gonna go ahead, I can either just click on the cities. Click a couple cities here. So I selected three cities. Click the green check here. I collected three cities here. I selected Houston, San Antonio, and Dallas. Notice what's happened. So first of all, it shows me those three dots on the map that I selected, zooms into that area, but also 
the top 10 cities, that bar chart changes to only show those three specific cities, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the data. Let's select it, so I can select it. I can also do this, I can also, I mean, I can also click on the map here and use the lasso too, and I can go ahead and just kind of draw around maybe this region of the United States. And now I've selected all those cities in the circle I just drew, okay? The 13 cities. Notice again here, quantity sold, top 10 cities. It only shows the top 10 of the 13 I selected, okay? Phoenix, Arizona being number one. We'll go ahead and clear out my selections here. Let's just say, hey, look, we sold a lot of, in Cheyenne here, we sold a lot. Well, I wanna see what the radius is. That is. What I mean by radius, I can actually click here, let's say we'll click here. I'll click the circle selection now, and I'll do a radius. So maybe from this point here, I wanna go out, Five hundred miles. So five hundred miles from this point here, I can draw a circle, if you would. It shows me all the cities within that particular five hundred mile radius from this point. So why don't we be number one? Then going over in North Dakota, etc. Okay. Come on. Check that out. All right. Let's, let's look at some specific states. I'm gonna click on states, and I can obviously select it from my drop down here. But we have a lot of states, so I'll click on Georgia. I'll type in West Virginia. I can also select from here, because again, my wizard, I can select Virginia, we'll say. So look at these three states, okay, Georgia. Virginia and West Virginia. Okay, well, oh, let's select the Carolinas too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the Carolina states. North Carolina. South Carolina. So we selected five states, okay. A couple things I like to demo showing these five states, okay. First of all, it, again, it shows me my zooms in, the map zooms into those five states. The map also shows the bubbles and the relationship of what sold the most to the least, the size of the bubble. Over here, my quantities sold top 10 cities. It shows me the top 10 cities to get up those five states. Two more things I'd like to point out. Number one, when I click on city state, it shows me not the cities and states again, but if I scroll down, notice there's some cities that are grayed out. Anchorage, Alaska, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Albany, New York, etc. Why are those grayed out? Because they don't fit in those five states. They're not cities in those five states. That's why it's grayed out. Obviously, I can click the product name, flavor name, sales year, etc. What we showed in the last sheet. But notice one thing. I'm going to click the drop down here. I'm going to go back to the product analysis sheet. The numbers have changed. Again, the filtering applies to all the specific sheets. So it shows me just for this sheet here, the bar chart, the pie chart, and the year month chart here just shows me those five states. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the selections. Let's take a look, quick look at the raw data sheet. Raw data sheet shows us the dates and transactions for a specific, all my data. So again, we had over 150,000 transactions. Basically, these are the 150,000 transactions. So it shows us here in by row, if you would, the dates. So it shows me, let's see, for January 3rd, I'll click the plus, and it shows me all the sales transactions for January 3rd, 2016. It's a specific sales ID. And then across in the counts, it shows me the specific flavors. So I can look at a specific flavor. So I'll say um, cookie dough. I can expand that out. It shows me an expansion of like mini cakes, ice cream bars, etc., for cookie dough. And I can do that for any of the flavors. Let's say I want to look at a specific date. So I'm going to click the search box here. 
I guess they've been presented on 25, 2018. So now I'm just looking at that specific date. Again, notice up here, my filter, 125, 2018. I'll click the plus. It shows me no sales transactions on that date. I can also look and say, okay, um, I'll click 125, 2018. Hmm. There was... Uh, this one here, let's look at this here. I sold seven. I can click here with the green check mark. So I had a sales transaction on 2018, ID of 2006-4178. If I click the post here for cookie dough, it shows me the product. So the flavor was cookie dough, the product was ice cream gallons, and I sold seven cases, if you would, of that product for that sales ID. So it lets me filter down right to the actual ID in my data, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my selections. And look at like for the foot, Rocky Road. Hey, what was this? I can look here. This, January 3rd, tells me again, all my transactions. For Rocky Road, we sold eight pints. And it's like Rocky Road. So on January 3rd, 2016, we had two sales transactions for Rocky Road ice cream pints, four cases and eight cases. So, hmm, interesting. I want to look to see here. I can click here. Let's click both transactions. Why not? So we look at those two transactions. So we're going to look at these two transactions. What were they sold? I can go back. Do the state analysis and it shows me here that we sold them in. I sold Frank and Move, Michigan, at a quantity sold of eight. And all the way down here in Raleigh, North Carolina, we sold four. Notice what has happened. One, the map filtered out on those two specific transactions. The other thing that happened, number two, is let's look at the circles. This circle is obviously larger than this circle, the bubble. Why? Because eight transactions were sold here and four were sold here. And obviously it's saying, hey, you can only filter out on certain different elements. So look at the packing, it was only ice cream pints, flavor was Rocky Road. Sales year was in 2016, right? 2016. The states were Michigan, North Carolina. So the filters automatically dynamically change based upon my selection here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get off the selections. One more thing, let's say I was doing an analysis on a particular flavor, we'll just make this easy, we'll do a flavor name, we'll do cookie dough, let's say we're looking at the states, um, let's say we had a sale in Michigan, Virginia, we'll do West Virginia, we'll do, and then we'll do Georgia. So we're selecting those states. Cookie dough, those states. Let's say we're doing an analysis of what we did with cookie dough for those specific states. What was our quantity sold for those specific states in 2019, okay? So, um, let's see, we'll pick a particular quarter. We'll look at the third and fourth quarter those two specific for cookie dough for those four specific states 2019 the third and fourth quarter okay so we're doing some kind of analysis on this data okay maybe we're having a sale or whatnot um a promotion of the product whatever the case may be but okay so now i have to leave the app go to maybe another meeting go to another topic or whatnot look at another analysis but i want to remember i want to keep this in the back of my mind, okay? Well, I'm filtering on four different fields in my application. So what I'll do is I'll click here. It says here, bookmarks. I can create a bookmark if you would. So we'll say, give it a title, we'll say, cookie. So, um, let's say Michigan, Georgia. Virginia, West, Virginia, 
plus 19 for for or you don't have to get as elaborate as that. And I'll save the sheet location too as well. And I can give it a description. I can put more details <clears throat> in the you know motion special number of one twenty-five. And so this is the mouse of that particular promotion special. So we're going to create. Okay, so we have this bookmark if you would create it, all right? So watch what happens. Take this out. So we have no filters right now. I even go back to my power sheet. We get called into a meeting. Hey, let's look at that cookie dough analysis. So I just click here. Notice what happened. Automatically when I selected it, so I clicked here, I selected it, and it works. It applied the filter, cookie dough, the locations, 2019 in the two quarters, and also brought me to this specific area of the sheet where I created the filter. So if I was on the product sheet, it would have brought me there. So not only does it remember the specific filter criteria, it remembers where I was at in the application. So that's how you do a bookmark. And you can do several bookmarks and whatnot. So, and that concludes this video on filtering.